Hi folks, Dave, The Honest Audiophile. Do tips, cables, sources like dongles, daps, PC, desktop, do they alter your experience when listening to an IEM? Do you get a sonic benefit? Why do I not use alternate tips and cables much in reviewing and do I use them in personal listening times? All of these questions I'm going to try to answer in this video. So let's start with kind of my personal philosophy. So my personal philosophy is I try to review things as much and as close to stock as possible. So I'm going to try to use the stock cable and stock tips. Now, if it's just not going to work, if it doesn't fit, if it doesn't seal, if it's just a terrible sounding cable, or if there's just mega issues with the experience itself, I will go to an alternative source, whether it be a cable or tips and try to, uh, be able to get a product that I can review and then explain why I'm using a different cable or different tips in the video and give you reasons and also give you the explanation of the differences that I hear. I do this because I want to be consistent in my reviews and I want to be as open and honest as possible in the review and give you the experience that I have as far as in stock form, personal experiences, uh, personal listening times. Yeah, I do use alternate cables at times, but I don't do that if I'm using that device when doing the review, I will go back to the stock cable. The IEM that I use for personal listening and also for reference to other IEMs in a review is the CTM DaVinci 10. This is my reference IEM. This is my personal daily driver as well. If you were to see me around town with IEMs in my ears, the chances of you seeing me with the CTM DaVinci 10 are very, very high. I use the stock cable and stock tips because I like the CTM build of it. I like the feel of the cable and the performance of the cable and the tips fit me very well. And I have no issues whatsoever and no reason to change either of them. Another IEM that I use on a regular basis is the Soft Ears Studio 4. And then I do have a custom IEM that I use, which is the Anthem 5 E6. And this is the one actually that I use alternate cables with the most often. Now I do use the CTM with alternate cables if I'm trying to hear differences or try out new cables because the CTM DaVinci 10 is very revealing of changes like that. But I hate the stock cable that came with the E6. And so I use an alternate cable with it all the time. This is the stock cable and it is absolutely atrocious, especially considering the price of the E6. So I use an alternate cable all the time with the E6. Do I think that cables can make a difference? We'll get into that in a little bit. Tips, do I use alternate tips? Again, it kind of goes back to the same po uh, policy that I use with cables. I try to review everything in stock form. Personal use, I will use different tips, mainly for comfort and seal and uh, really to, if I need to alter the sonic performance of a device. In the review, I will mention if I have to use a different tip for whatever reason it didn't fit me uh the stock tips were absolutely uh, trash and and weren't very good something that i have learned through the years is that manufacturers are very much selective of the gear that they provide of the accessories whether or not they want you to use a certain cable they want you to use a certain uh, tip with it 
And as it goes up in price in the product, they become a little bit more selective. A lot of the budget options, they just kind of chuck the same thing in the box and say, here you go, here's your, your standard cable, here's your standard tip. But when it comes to more expensive gear, usually a couple hundred dollars or higher, they become a lot more selective in what they provide and they have chosen those for a specific reason. And so they're trying to say, this is how this product is to sound, use these tips. So I try to portray that in my review, but I do use some alternate tips. Now, I get told often I don't mention foam tips a lot, and that's because I don't really care for foam tips, but I do use them. One of the brands that I use is Ludos, and I really enjoy these tips a lot. They're nice and soft. They are a little bit more longer barreled, and they fit me very well. And then I have a huge collection of Dakoni tips that I try out every now and then. Comply tips I'll use, but I'm not a huge fan of them. I don't like the feel of them. And also they're a little too dense. And at times they can really alter the sound of the gear that they are being used on. In my personal experience, they add too much bass and they dampen the uppers too much. But that's not always the case on all IEMs. And then I have a huge tote, and this is just some of the tips that I use. And yeah, actually I do know <laughs> what all those tips are, but to name a few off the top of my head that I really enjoy are the CTM Flexi Tip, the Triclarion Tip. I also like the JVC Spiral Dots, the Sony Tips, and also I use Ear Pro, uh, the Soft Ears, uh, UCs, also um, Moondrop, tip and there's several others if you have any questions regarding tips i can uh, try to answer those but in the review i do mention the reason why i changed the tip and the sonic differences that i heard so do tips make a difference sonically we'll talk about that in a moment another thing to consider when with your listening experience is your source. So I have this big, huge amount of dongles and these aren't all of them actually. And dongles can make a difference in the experience and it kind of alters your sound a little bit as well. You know, whether or not it's a warmer dongle or a colder dongle, something neutral, something natural, a mixture of all of them, whether or not it has a little bit of power or a lot of power. They can all make a difference and add to the experience or take away from the experience. So, yeah, I, I am a believer that sources can make a difference, including DAPs like the Hibi R5 Gen 2 or the Sony NWA105 or the Sony WM1A. All of those sources can make a difference as well. And just like the dongles, the Sound of them can be a little bit different. Some of them are a little bit more neutral. Some of them are a little bit warmer. Some have a bigger bass or more uh, treble presence. You know, it just kind of depends on the performance. The nice, nice added bonus about using Adapt is that you can get um, ones that have Android or, or have some other sort of UI. And so you can connect with the internet and have streaming services if you use those or local files or you can even do some of your internet browsing um, watching youtube videos like this one that i'm recording right now or you can um, chat on discord or check your emails and things like that you basically the only thing that you can't do on a dap is make a phone call so do daps and dongles make a difference in your listening experience absolutely i do believe that it definitely is one of the impacts so let's talk about cables more specifically what is my favorite cable manufacturer for iems and what other cables do i have and why and what are the differences so I have a lot of different cables. I'm not going to show them all here today. I'm going to show some specific ones. Some of my favorite cables 
And keep in mind, the majority of these cables get used with the Anthem 5 E6 because this stock cable is just absolutely atrocious. Why do I change cables on IEMs? If, if I'm doing a review or if I'm using the IEM for personal use. First thing first is, is it cheap and is it comfortable? Um, if it feels janky and doesn't really match the price tag of the IEM, these cost $600 um, and this cable feels like it's about a, a $2 cable. It is awful, awful, awful. And so that's the reason why I change the cable on it. The other reason why I will change a cable is because sonically it's just not performing. The other cables do make a difference. A couple other examples of some IEMs where the cables don't really match the price tag. This is the Hi-Fi-Man Esfinar. And this cable feels like it's a $10 cable. It's a it's an atrociously bad cable. Now, you, I know you're all probably snickering. That's because it's a Hi-Fi-Man, which is true. But the price tag of the Esfinar is crazy high. And they should include a lot better cable. You also have the Oravadi OV800, which is a $800 IEM. And even though I like the IEM, the cable isn't really that great, especially for the price tag. And again, this would be a cable, if I wasn't reviewing these, that would get changed out rather quickly. Not a bad cable, but for the price tag, not really impressed by it. And then this is the Spirit of Tureen, uh, the Twin Beryllium, I think is what it's called. And this cable also, for the price tag of these, isn't bad, but it's not anything super special. It's just kind of another cable. And even though this one is nicer, considering the price tag of the Spirit of Tureen, uh, Beryllium, whatever their impulse, ber Beryllium's, it's still kind of a little bit lackluster for the price tag. Now, I'm not near as picky when it comes to cables on budget stuff, but when you're asking a, a bigger price tag, I become a little picky. So some of the budget cables that you can get are a drop two pin cable. You can either get it in their premium version or in their more standard version. And both of these cables are sonically very solid and they're nicely built and they look nice and they just feel a whole lot better than a cable like this. If you want something a little bit more unique and that's a little bit more heavy duty built, you could go with something like a Thea Audio Smart cable. It has nice ear hooks, it's a fabric braid, and then because it's a smart cable, you can disconnect the terminations and choose whatever termination you want. And I think it comes with three or four different terminations. I don't remember. They're stashed around here in the box that that goes in. But you also have other cables from a cable like CTM, where you can get their cable, which is an extremely nice, well-built, hybrid cable of copper silver for like $150 and it's just well built very durable I've had that same cable for like two years since I've owned the Da Vinci 10s and it looks almost as good as it did on day one this is a exceptionally built cable very well built and it gets used every single day but my favorite manufacturer actually is Effect Audio. Now Effect Audio, if you go on their website and you read the information regarding their various cable models, you're going to get some elaborate explanations and you're going to get these claims of amazing soundstage, big bass, clarity, a ma a massive huge wide stages, deep stages, and all this kind of stuff. And when I read that, I kind of just go, oh, okay, whatever and just kind of gloss it over 
And I'm I'm more worried, you know, caring about the quality build of the cable, the feel of it, the look of it. Does it look more premium? Will it match my IEM? And will it enhance the visual appeal? And will it feel better? Instead of all these other claims. Now, if it makes a sonic difference, that's a bonus. But I care more about the actual aesthetics. The look and the feel and the comfort of it. And so I have several different cables from Effect Audio. And these aren't even all of them. But we have the Effect Audio Aries. We have a um, Cadmus. We have a another Aries. And this is a... Um, Aries is a copper silver Litz hybrid cable. And then um, we have an, e an Eros, which is right here. Now, this is the first edition, first anniversary edition of the Eros. And Effect Audio was kind enough to send this over to me as a gift for being a customer of theirs and having per done some other uh, tests and comparisons of their products. And I've got to say, this is the thickest IEM cable I've ever come across. It's This is thicker than some headphone cables. And it's a little bit too thick for my liking. It's, it's a nice cable. It feels really nice. Ear hooks are a little bit on the thick side. And for the price tag of this, this cable, as well built as it is, I'm... Not super fan of it. I like my cables to be a little bit lighter and a little bit thinner. Now, the cool thing about this is it does have the Connex connections. So you just twist off the end. I'm not going to do it here on camera. And you can change out the two pin to an MMCX, which is a nice touch. So if you have different IEMs with different connectors, you can do it with this cable. Some of the Effect Audio cables do have that option for a little extra. But I like the cable. It's very well built, but it's too thick. I prefer more like what this cable is, which is the Aries. And it's just a little bit thinner and just flows a little bit better. It's not near as thick and heavy. And that's what kind of I'm looking for when it comes to a cable. Now, sonically. There is a difference in cables, but it's not this amazingly end of the world, um, stop the moment type of, of sound signature. It's more of a subtlety. Copper or hybrids like this are my preferred sound, but I also like silver. So what's the difference? Silver will add in a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of energy, and a little bit more clarity. They tend to be a little bit more um, bright and a little bit more intense in their presentation. But again, it's a very subtle difference. A pure copper cable tends to add in a little bit of warmth and isn't quite as intense. Maybe has a little bit more of a, uh, a full body effect. And then the hybrid, which is what, what I tend to prefer, which is on my CTM DaVinci 10s, and then also on the Eros and a few others that I have, combine those different flavors. And so you get a, a, a nice, more natural, sparkly, energetic, and accurate and true response. And that's why I use a cable is because I'm trying to get that natural, neutral reproduction of sound and match it up with the IEM. Not all cables work with every single IEM. Some IEMs have different sound signatures and so cables will impact that accordingly. But yeah, cables can make a difference. But I think that the, the key is in order to hear these differences, whether or not it's a tip or a cable or a source. The key is you have to have gear 
that is very resolving and very revealing. It has good details and is very accurate in its reproduction. If you're using a, a lower end, less quality driver to IEM and not a very good revealing product to begin with and you're trying to enhance it, you're really not going to hear the effects because the driver and the IEM itself just isn't capable of it. So to boil all this down, 20 minutes later, yeah, you can hear differences in all of these different aspects, whether it be the source, the tip, or the cable, but they all play together and each one of them makes a subtle difference. And so you just kind of have to tweak it and you have to play with it and you learn with it. But you can be guaranteed that the Honest Audio File is going to review products based on stock form as best as he can. And as best as I can, why am I talking in third person? As best as I can, I'm going to review things in stock form because that's the truest and most accurate way and the intended way of the manufacturer. And if I can't review it that way, I'm going to tell you why. But stock tips, stock cables, and whatever source you use should be enough. But alternate cables, tips, and sources can and might make a difference. It's been Dave, The Honest Audio File. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you on the next video. Speak of next video, somewhere on screen, subscription links, notification bells. If you haven't already, please check those off. Don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video. And check out all the links down below. There's all kinds of information down there regarding how you can contact the channel, follow the channel, support the channel. All that kind of stuff is listed down below. Speaking of supporting the channel, I do want to thank my supporters through Patreon and YouTube memberships. Thank you very much for all that you provide to the channel. It's much appreciated. All funds given to the channel do go back into the channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there are multiple ways that you can do it through one-time gifts with PayPal and Venmo or monthly subscriptions through Patreon and YouTube memberships where you can get access to my private Discord server and also possibilities of one-time conversations and personal private uh, live streams and all that kind of stuff. So check out the links down below for how you can support the channel. It'd be much appreciated. And lastly, don't forget to enjoy the music and that honesty is the best policy.